This video is sponsored by PCBV. Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to introduce you to my new big project. Uh, I've been working on this project for quite some time and now I finally arrived to the stage where after some prototyping and programming I could design the PCB and then get it manufactured by PCBV. So as you can see I have a bunch of PCBs, namely five. And uh, it's a relatively nicely laid out and uh, nice uh, green uh, PCB. And the purpose of this PCB is a high precision and let's say high performance uh, three axis uh, stepper motor driver. So first let's uh, discuss what is on this PCB. And then I will uh, build uh, one of these uh, PCBs. I will populate it with all the necessary components and then uh, we'll test it and uh, I will dedicate several parts to this uh, let's say series because I cannot uh, squeeze every information into one video so I recommend you to subscribe to my channel first of all if you are not a subscriber and then uh, keep following my uh, video series on this topic because I think uh, this will be a very useful and very interesting topic for those who want to have a three axis uh, stepper motor controller, especially with these devices that I'm uh, using here. So since I have these nice PCBs provided by PCBWay, uh, let's first uh, talk about their services. So if you want to get uh, this PCB or you want to use their other services, head over to PCBWay's website or to my project page and then uh, get the products that you want to have from them. Especially this board is published on my project site, link is in the description, so you can get this uh, board from them and uh, they can manufacture it. And also I want to remind you that they not only have a PCB manufacturing capability, but uh, once you provide them with the corresponding files and uh, components and everything, they also have a good assembly service. You can ask PCBWay to assemble the PCB for you, so you just basically get the complete circuit. And you order from them so head over to pcbway.com and check their services and use whichever suits you the best so coming back to the pcb let's uh, start with the core of it uh, and for this particular uh, application i have chosen the tnz4 uh, microcontroller it's a very high performance microcontroller it has a very high amount of gpio pins but i just use the default pins of it and I broke out all the other pins uh, which are not used or even if they are used uh, there will be another uh, rail of pins here just so we can access them if we need them in addition to that. And then the second big thing here which is not really uh, discussed on YouTube so I will have another video or video series on this is the TMC429 uh, uh, step promoter driver circuit. So I will show this when I assemble the board, but uh, here there will be a circuit which can generate a ramp uh, signal for three uh, stepper motors or stepper motor drivers. And uh, it can also handle six, so two for each uh, stepper motor driver, six uh, limit switches. And then there are other functions that you can do with this. But the main function of this thing is that it is connected to the microcontroller by SPI connection. And then it can offload the uh, microcontroller because this circuit component will be the component that uh, generates the step and direction signal uh, for the stepper motor drivers. So then you don't need to toggle the digital pins on the microcontroller, but this guy will do it for you. So you just send one command to this uh, TMC429 controller and then that will take care of the rest of the things. Easy. So then uh, this, as I said, uh, communicates with three other stepper motor drivers. So I just used the TMC2209 uh, drivers. So we have an X, Y and Z axis. So these are all uh, identical here. Then uh, coming back to this corner, uh, we will have a status LED. I have an RGB LED, which is driven by three uh, PWM signals. So you see the three uh, places for the resistors and they will go to the corresponding pins. I will use a common cathode uh, RGB LED, but I will publish more uh, 
details about it on my website as well. And then I have the three volts uh, pins here. So I have three extra pins for power and then of course the ground. And then uh, if you go here, let's say here, uh, we will have the power input with a regular DC barrel jack. So nothing extraordinary there. And then from here, of course, the power will directly go to the motor drivers. That is not unusual. But then the same voltage, which can be maximum 24 volts, uh, will go to a MP2315 uh, based uh, step down module. I will show it uh, when I assemble the board. So then this will create the 3.3 volts to the rest of the circuit. And then uh, here will be an LED, a status LED. So that will just show that we have 3.3 volt. And as you can see here, I have a test point, which is a 3.3 test point. And then here we can test uh, the motor uh, voltage. And uh, of course, we will need a ground reference point. So that is also uh, yeah, traced out here. So you can uh, measure against the ground and the VMOT, which is the motor uh, voltage and the ground and the 3.3 volt. And that's uh, simple. And then coming back here, uh, we have an I squared C connection. So I just put it, put it here as an extra I squared C uh, header, because for example, if you want to use an I squared C display, then this will be uh, very useful. But the main reason where we use the I squared C is this uh, PCF8574 uh, uh, GPIO extension module. So then uh, this is connected to the microcontroller via I squared C and uh, this will take care of the buttons or switches that uh, we will use because here we will have uh, in total six uh, inputs, three inputs to select uh, the X, Y and Z uh, motor when we, for example, want to move by buttons. So we can only move one axis at a time with the button uh, for reasons. And then there is a mode selector where we have J as joystick because these three axes will be able to be controlled by a joystick. B as button. So that's when we use buttons to move one axis at a time forward or backwards. And then U as uh, UART or serial when we connect to the TNC 4.0 microcontroller via USB and then we control the axis by sending yeah, uh, commands by the uh, serial port and the G on both sides is the ground obviously because the switch is uh, done between one of these G, B, U and the ground because they are high by default and then whenever we press the switch or close the switch short it then we short it towards the ground because we pull it to low and then we have three axes here for the joystick so x y and z axis uh, plus pin is up there 3.3 volt and the s as a signal so that will go to the analog pins on the tnc microcontroller and minus is obviously the ground and then here we have the buttons they are not connected to this io port because this is just uh, yeah let's say a slow IO port, but they directly go to the GPIO pins on the microcontroller. So we will have an abort button, which is just quickly shuts down everything, and then a backward and forward uh, button, and they go to their corresponding uh, GPIO pins on the microcontroller. And then one thing I also want to talk about is in the center. So this uh, stepper motor uh, ramp generator can also take care of six limit switches. Each axis, X, Y, and Z, can have two uh, limit switches, obviously, because one is the left side, which is at the motor, and the other is at the right side, which is far away from the motor, uh, stepper motor. So then uh, we have one pair for Z right and Z left. Another pair is for Y left and Y right, and another pair for X, uh, left and X right and uh, for limit switches I will have uh, some yeah off the shelf modules I will show them and uh, they are cheap and uh, easy and reliable so why not use them so now what we need to do here is I need to start to populate this board so let me prepare the things and then we start assembling the board and I will show you what is what so here is the board and it's more or less assembled 
I decided not to include and uh, record the assembly and soldering because uh, first of all it took like one hour to do this and it is also maybe not too interesting so yeah here is the almost done on board here is the uh, back side of it as you can see it's a bit dirty because I haven't cleaned it up but uh, I will clean it up and then yeah it will be nice uh, but now uh, what should come and what I will uh, show you is that I will start inserting the different parts and I will start explaining what they do. So the first part will be this TNC 4.0 uh, microcontroller. This is a super powerful uh, microcontroller. It has very high clock speed and it has a bunch of uh, different peripherals. It has a lot of memory. And it has a lot of GPIO pins. It's not only these pins which are revealed here, but also those tabs that you can see. Uh, you can use some uh, Pogo pins and uh, have them on your uh, circuit board. But I'm just using a few pins uh, overall. I am more like uh, after the speed of this uh, microcontroller. So I will just uh, yeah use this. I'm not even using these pins. And I'm just using just a few pins uh, from one side because I use the SPI for the uh, ramp uh, generator. And then I use the I2C mainly for the uh, GPIO uh, expander and for the display, which is optional. And then uh, analog pins for the joystick, which will come later. And then uh, three GPIO pins for these three buttons here. So microcontroller has been installed so we can kind of follow this chain and we can go to the uh, TMC429 uh, module. So this is the module. I will have a separate video of this because this is a very interesting hardware and there are barely any resources on this on uh, YouTube let's say. However there is a person, link is in the description, who created an awesome library for this thing. So you don't need to write your own code and I did not need to write my own code either. So then just using the library, uh, you can have uh, control over this thing. And what this thing does is that here on the left hand side, it has the SPI pins. And with the help of the SPI communication, we can generate step and uh, direction signals for three individual uh, stepper motor drivers and then you can see this ref1 ref2 ref3 and uh, so on pins on the top right corner uh, those are for the reference switches or limit switches so then this cannot can not only handle three individual drivers but it can handle two limit switches per driver as well so if you have a linear axis then both sides can be uh, let's say uh, covered with the limit switches. So this goes into the board as well. So one step further, then we have this little chip PCF8574N and this is the GPIO expander. So there is nothing too much uh, to talk about this chip. Uh, you can connect it to your microcontroller's I2C uh, port and then uh, you can have eight GPIO pins either input or output uh, you decide I will use them as inputs for the mode selectors but since the mode selectors only use up uh, six pins three times two I have pin six P6 and pin seven P7 there uh, which can be accessed by that uh, terminal. So even if you want something extra, that can be reached by uh, those two pins. Uh, so yeah, let's go and uh, put this in as well. So now we have this uh, chip in the port as well. Hopefully I did not insert it upside down. I followed this notch, which should be pin one here. So yeah, I will see. And then uh, let's go to the stepper motor drivers and uh, here I have to talk a bit more 
uh, about the drivers. So we have this guy, and this is the original Trinomic uh, TMC2209. This is the silent step stick. And uh, what we can do here is the following. You can see those three tabs that I'm highlighting on the video. And uh, by shorting either the right side or the left side to the middle, uh, we can have the UART pin on either this pin, which I'm highlighting, or on the other pin, which I'm highlighting. And then uh, this is very important to uh, follow properly. And why this is important is because I have another board, uh, which is this guy. This is an AliExpress version of the TMC2209. This is much, much cheaper than the other. But what is very important is that tiny resistor that I'm trying to uh, show you and highlight. So now that resistor is in the wrong position. That uh, brings the uh, UART uh, connection to the wrong pin. So that resistor has to be uh, desoldered and it has to be connected to the other pin. So you just basically shift it uh, towards the right. And then uh, I will show you the final result, uh, how they should uh, look like. So then uh, with this board, both the, let's say, OG uh, TMC2209 uh, silent step stick is compatible. This is the default compatible chip. But then if you have low budget, like I have, uh, then you buy these because you can buy a handful of this for the same price as you can buy this guy here. And then you can use this, but you need to uh, desolder that small resistor. I think that's the R7 and then uh, solder it uh, to the other side. So the first thing that we have to pay attention to is that if you use this original uh, version of the board, now you can see that the revealed side is the back side with the text and where the pins are facing is the chip side. And then uh, I showed you that we have those three tabs. So now I'm holding like this, that on the right side we have the potentiometer and the left side we have the capacitor. Uh, you can see that here the center tab is connected to the right hand side tab. So now I put them next to each other and you can see how the tabs are soldered. This has to be done, uh, whatever you do, it must be done. So it is compatible with this uh, board. But then we have to go to the AliExpress version of this chip. And then uh, now I'm picking up the original. So this is unmodified. And uh, you can see that this is the resistor R7 that I'm uh, talking about. And you can see that this solder tab is free. So this has to be shifted here. So if I took the one which I tested, you can see that I did a somewhat botched job, but uh, it's there. So if I try to hold them next to each other, then you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So this is the original and you can see that uh, the resistor is closer to the R7 here. And this is the modified and this modification has to be done in order to make the AliExpress version of the TMC2209 compatible with my board. So then you unsolder or desolder this uh, resistor, which was here originally, and shift it back to this part. So now the resistor is between this and the center uh, tab. And then that will bring uh, the UART to the correct pin. So then uh, you can see that we have the two extra pins, which we are actually not using in this version. So then is just uh, simply plugged in and obviously uh, the other version this guy here that also goes in the same way actually when I demonstrate this uh, board 
I will have one of the AliExpress here and another will be the silent step stick. So actually I can prove you that uh, yeah, it works with both uh, boards if you make the uh, corresponding modifications. But now I remove it because I need to show you some other stuff and they will be in the way. So yeah, let's say we have taken care of these three drivers and then we came to this uh, step down module. Which is this guy here. So previously I made my own module, which was quite a silly decision because I can buy almost 10 of this module for the price I buy the uh, com converter or controller uh, chip uh, from Mouser. So yeah, this is from the local Amazon and it's a uh, high performance, so several amps, 3.3 uh, or actually selectable uh, step down converter. So now what we have here is that uh, the, in the default position, you can see that here on the top we have the adjust uh, pin or tab which is connected to this uh, potentiometer but uh, the, we don't need this because we want a fixed 3.3 watt power supply uh, so what we do is that we cut this thing here and then what we have to do is we have to solder together uh, these tabs here at the 3.3 volt so this can be cut with a sharp uh, knife. I will uh, try to show you how I do it. And then this can be obviously soldered together with a soldering iron and some solder. So I will do that and uh, before I will solder it here because I'm not using any of these uh, 2.54 millimeter headers. I, I will just solder this inside directly. I will show you how it works and we will make sure that I'm not inserting any faulty uh, circuit. So yeah, let me do this uh, work. Let me show you how it, uh, how it is done. It's probably not super visible, but uh, yeah, the trace is broken there. And then there is this so small blob of uh, solder, which shorts out those, those two solder tabs at uh, the 3.3 volt. So let's uh, test this thing. So here is my variable power supply. Now I set it to 13 volts. So let's check the output voltage first. Yes, it's 13 volts. So you can see that will be the input voltage of this module. So then if we come back to this, then uh, the input is this pin next to the enable pin. So this goes there. And then we have a ground connection here. So this is fine. Hopefully I don't short anything. Now I turn on the power supply. So first, let's see that there is an input voltage. There is. And now we can see if there is an output voltage at 3.3 volts. So it works. So I can solder this in. So the module will be here, but you can see that uh, it doesn't stand nicely. So I show you my trick again. So you take this, which is a blue tech or this white tech, which I showed in one of my earliest uh, shorts. And what we can do here is that I insert it in a way I want, and then I just support it uh, with this thingy. So for example, something like this. And then I can quickly solder those three pins. So this came off and it stands there nicely. Uh, actually, if you look at an unpopulated board, you can see that I have the nice outline here. So then that is now covered. So now this, this is supposed to be the complete board, except uh, I have to put together the three uh, way switches and uh, that will be the following. So 
for the three-way switch, I selected this on, on, on switch. So whatever we do, in any case, there will be an on state. There is never an off state because here we always have to activate or we always want to, at least I always want to uh, have one of the uh, modes or one of the axes active. So I want to use one of the axes all the time. So either the switch will reflect uh, this decision that I chose X or Y or Z. Or I chose the joystick mode, the button mode or the USB mode uh, among these uh, three modes. So for that we have this uh, three-way switch and uh, then there is a funny way uh, that we can kind of short uh, several pins together and then have one pin as the input and rest of the pins as the output quote-unquote input and output is just shorting out certain pins whenever we change the switch. And for that I put together a demonstration because I think it's very uh, interesting to know how to use these kind of switches. So this is my humble demonstration here and uh, we have the switch like this. Uh, we have three LEDs here, uh, red, green and blue. They are connected to the, let's say, outputs. So those, these uh, three uh, wires here and the input is just a small resistor here so the power supply will be connected to this side of the resistor and it will go in as you can see if I hold this in a way that the key way is now pointing downwards so you can see that here there is a notch and uh, I'm just rotating this that direction so the key way is now actually pointing downwards here. Uh, the input pin is this pin in the center. And you can see that the top pin on the left uh, column is shorted to the middle pin on the right column. And then uh, we can see that the first output pin is the yellow. And then we have the uh, blue and then we have the white wire. Uh, I will of course draw a nice schematic and put it on my website, but I want to show you how this works. So here is the system, the demonstration system. So power supply in, goes through the resistor, goes into the switch, and then depending on the state of this uh, toggle switch, uh, then the circuit will be shorted towards one of these LEDs. And the LEDs obviously are connected through this terminal here. So let me turn on the power supply. And now you see that we have, an, have the red LED on. So now uh, the switch is pointing upwards. So the notch is here and this is on the opposite side. So when, uh, the, when the switch is on the opposite side of the notch, so on the left side, if we, if we look at the text, or on the right side, if we look at this uh, text. But let's have the notch as the reference. So if the opposite side of the notch is the active uh, thing, then the output is the yellow cable. So that is, uh, if you have the notch as the reference, that is the top right corner here. And then I move this to the middle position which is the green LED and the green LED comes through the white wire. So again, notch is facing us, it's facing the camera. And uh, then the white wire is the output. So you can see that that is on the left side and the top uh, left side. And then obviously if I go all the way to the notch, so I move this downwards. Then the blue LED is the active one and uh, that belongs to the blue wire, uh, which is here. And then uh, the blue wire is, if we look at the notch, that is the bottom left wire. So to repeat this, uh, now the notch is facing upwards. Uh, the input is the green wire here that goes into the center pin. 
here. And then uh, the bottom right is connected to the middle left. And then uh, this is pin three when the notch is, or when the switch is at the notch. And then when we are at the middle, then the output is this guy here. So uh, top left. And when we are at the other side as compared to the notch position, so here, then the active pin is this yellow one here. So that's that. But as I said, uh, go to my website and you will have a nice drawing and an explanation and probably a few pictures just to have this in a easier way because yeah, it's maybe easier if you look at the picture. So then here I will have two of these switches and uh, then they will be just connected to these uh, positions here. And as you can see, there is also a ground pin uh, because you might use a different switch than this. So for example, you want to short each of these uh, to the ground. But also here, the input pin is actually the ground, uh, which was the input pin in the previous demonstration. So then the ground will be shorted either to Z, Y or X with the help of this on, on, on switch. So yeah, I will prepare both of these uh, switches to make this board uh, working. And then uh, that's that. But uh, before doing that, I keep explaining the rest of the parts here. So we have the X, Y, Z axis. That is the joystick. And I have a very nice joystick here. I bought this from the local version of the eBay. You can see that even this uh, thing is a Swedish product. So what we can do with this, of course, up, down, left, right, or whatever, and then this thing spins. So let's say X, Y, Z. So we have the three axes, and of course we have these wires, but I will rework these wires because I also need to make them compatible with these uh, connectors. And also I might need somewhat uh, longer wires because I, I haven't yet planned which kind of enclosure I want to use. But yeah, I want to have, let's say, this distance between the two uh, components. So I want to replace these wires with a longer one. But uh, let me keep explaining the things before I do those things. So then at this corner, we have a board backward forward pins. Uh, they will be treated with this kind of buttons. Uh, I use this button in some of my earlier uh, stepper motor related project. This has a very good uh, mechanism and uh, it, yeah, it, it's just very nice to use it. It's a Japanese product, so no wonder why it is high quality. But yeah, these are very expensive buttons, but uh, they do their job perfectly. Uh, but yeah, that's what we would expect for the uh, price. But then simply I will just connect one wire on this and another wire on this. There are no resistors or anything because they are on the board, the pull-up resistors. And then uh, I will just use a yeah, two-pin uh, connector here and a relatively long wire uh, to have uh, the buttons connected to this corner. And then the uh, status LED, uh, you can see this is a four pin LED. And uh, here you see a small marking, hopefully, a small minus sign there. Uh, that is the longest pin of this uh, common cathode uh, LED. And uh, these are the three resistors, which come from the PWM pins of this microcontroller. So they drive uh, the red, green and blue uh, colors in the LED. And uh, I will have different kind of uh, statuses, uh, which will be then reflected by the color or the blinking or status of this uh, LED. And then finally, the last thing that I want to show, or the second last thing, is these uh, connections for the limit switches. It's obviously written there, what is that? So the following part will be used, uh, which is this type of limit switch. And as you can see, it has this kind of uh, three pin connection. So I designed, uh, I designed just uh, picked uh, the parts specifically for this kind of connection and this kind of polarity. Because if you take a closer look, you can see that there is a plus, minus and a letter S. 
because the polarity of this thing is also similar. So red plus, uh, black minus, and uh, green is S as signal. So I can just plug it in and uh, now we have a limit switch here. So that's uh, very nice and uh, simple. And then obviously the last thing is that we need to connect the motors somehow. So the motors will be connected uh, like this. And uh, since I haven't crossed the things here, as you can see, the trace is straight out, straight come out from the uh, stepper motor driver. Then uh, you can also see that if this guy goes here, then the polarity with this specific driver will be M1B, M1A, M2A, M2B from left to right. And uh, that might uh, require you to change the polarity of your stepper motor. But uh, first you, we will check it and uh, we will see if we need to change the polarity. But uh, the stepper motors are usually uh, color coded uh, or their wires are color coded. And uh, this should be fine because the first two pins from the left uh, is one coil in the stepper motor and then the other two pins uh, correspond to the other stepper motor uh, coil. And uh, kind of the same uh, can be observed here. They don't write the pin uh, assignments here, but it's, it's kind of the same. But yeah, probably I will also need to do something about these uh, connections. I have the counterparts of this uh, type of uh, connectors. I just need to make sure that my stepper motors have the same, uh, with the same polarity. So I will prepare the toggle switches, the joystick and the buttons and the stepper motors. And then uh, I will come back with a proper demonstration. So I'm back with the setup and as you can see it is assembled, but uh, I must admit that it took more than I expected. <laughs> it took me roughly four hours uh, to finish the PCB. There was a lot of tiny things. And actually, I also discovered a mistake uh, which I made. And uh, the mistake is the following. So here, pin 18 and pin 19 from the microcontroller is the SDA and SCL pins uh, for the I2C uh, bus, which goes to this uh, PCF uh, GPIO expander and also to this uh, port. And since they are mixed up, uh, then I could not communicate with this uh, module and uh, therefore I had to break the trace. So I, I cannot show it here right now because the cables are already arranged and it's just hard to flip it. But yeah, I cut the uh, cable or trace here and then I just rewired directly from here uh, to the chip. But of course the version 1.1 will uh, contain this uh, fix and also it might contain other fixes but so far this is the only mistake that i uh, discovered but obviously when you go to my project site then uh, this mistake with the mixed uh, sda and sca pins will be corrected and if you buy this pcb uh, from pcb way then you will get the correct one but uh, coming back to the system uh, we have the setup so here we have the joystick and uh, of course that is connected to the corresponding pins as it uh, is expected. Then we have uh, three buttons here and uh, forward, backwards and abort. And uh, they are also uh, connected to the corresponding uh, pins which are right here. And then we have uh, two selectors X, Y, Z and uh, joystick button uh, USB. Those are these two guys. And uh, recently I released a short uh, video where I explain how to wire these things. So please uh, check that uh, shorts video. But uh, the main uh, principle of these uh, on 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 three way switches is that uh, they have three different states and there is always one active state selected by the switches. And then uh, I just uh, had to connect some limit switches because in the software I have already enabled the limit switches for the X axis because I was uh, 
setting up the homing and stuff uh, for the X axis. And since I was a bit lazy, I uh, kept uh, the code as it is. And therefore the code is actively looking for the limit switches. Therefore I had to uh, attach them. And then here we have X, Y and Z uh, stepper motors. These are NEMA 17 pancake type of uh, motors. They are very thin or yeah, tiny. And you can see that I have some zip ties attached to them, uh, which just hopefully helps us to see the movement better. And uh, one more thing that you should uh, pay attention to is that we, here we have a status LED. And I also programmed that according to different uh, states. But uh, yeah, we will uh, look at this from a closer perspective. And then I will try to include yeah, this scenario uh, from a closer perspective. And uh, then I will show you uh, the basic uh, principles of this uh, setup. So here is the setup and hopefully everything will be visible. Uh, before powering it up, uh, I just uh, show you the mode selector button. So the state according to this is here. So J, B, U, G. The G is not the mode, that's just the ground. And uh, the switch is according to the order of this. So on the top, uh, position where we have the notch, then we have the joystick mode selected. And if I move the button down to the middle, then we have the button mode enabled. And then if I move down, uh, then I connect via USB. And then uh, I control everything by USB. And of course, the joystick and the button modes are disabled. But now we will start with the joystick. So we will have this at the top here. And then uh, this is now irrelevant, but uh, this is for the X, Y and Z axis and it has the same principle. So here we have the notch on this side or keyway. And this is when it is at the top, then it's uh, also following the order here. So top is X, the middle is Y and the opposite side of the keyway is uh, Z. But let's uh, keep it at X uh, right now, but it's not relevant because we are using the joystick now. And then uh, also I must uh, say that first the power supply has to be connected, this one. And uh, since the TNZ works in a funny way, uh, it always requires a USB. Why? Uh, by default, uh, this microcontroller uh, doesn't behave in the same way as an Arduino that you just connect an external power source to the 5 volt or 3 volt rail and it works. But you cannot do that. Despite the fact that here I have a 3.3 volt uh, power supply, which provides the logical uh, voltage uh, to, to the rest of the 3.3 volt uh, devices, I cannot power the TNZ with it. The, the only way would be that I provide 5 volt externally uh, to the V in uh, pin. And then that is uh, powering the TNZ. Uh, but the problem is that uh, I did not want to put one more uh, power regulator to my board. Uh, so then uh, the easy way is to power it via the USB cable. And actually for me that makes more sense because uh, if you want to control it from your computer, you will anyway need the USB connection. So that's that. And also when it comes uh, to the connection, uh, I, I figured out a neat way of uh, putting this into an enclosure and that's the following. So here we have a 90 degree uh, uh, micro USB connector and it's with a very flexible cable and here we have a, yeah, a regular USB connector. So then uh, how does this go to the housing or enclosure? I have this guy which is a simple yeah, enclosure connector. And you can see that uh, the USB comes out here. So what I can do is I can connect this internally in the enclosure. And then this goes obviously on the TNZ uh, microcontroller. And then I can uh, manage this uh, properly uh, in, in the enclosure. So I will have a very nice uh, USB connector on, on, the, uh, on the enclosure that I will build or print for this uh, PCB. Or alternatively, I can use even older USB uh, 
let's say, standard, this uh, printer USB port. And this also has the same micro USB uh, connector on the other side. So this can be put on the, on the enclosure uh, from the inside. And then uh, I can plug a USB-A in this. And then this will just uh, sit here. And uh, why I'm talking so much about uh, these USB connectors is that I don't want to always plug this in and out because yeah, it puts a lot of strain on the tiny USB connector. And uh, this is a very expensive microcontroller uh, for, for just being destroyed by its USB uh, port. So then for the future uh, parts of this uh, project, I will use one of these uh, connectors. But then uh, coming back here, uh, now what we do is I will plug this in and uh, it's not powered yet, so that's fine. And I power it up. So a laboratory power supply will supply the wall circuit, uh, the motors directly, and then uh, the rest of the circuit components except the TNC uh, through this 3.3 uh, uh, step regulator, step down regulator. And uh, then I plug in the uh, USB into the TNC and then the board gets activated and then we can see what happens. But I just wanted to de describe what, uh, what is the uh, procedure because some stuff will happen in the beginning. So this power supply will supply 12 volts and 2 amps uh, and that's that. So I turn it on and uh, now the basic uh, uh, current consumption is 0 0.29 uh, amps or 290 milliamps. So uh, the standby mode uh, yeah, requires some uh, power. And then I plug in the USB here. And uh, here you could see that there was some kind of uh, yeah, default uh, motion just to test that the drivers work. And uh, hopefully you can see that this LED is now uh, on and it's uh, blue. So once again, uh, let's check this. So the button here is at, uh, or the switch, the toggle switch is at the keyway, which means that we are in the joystick mode. So if I move the joystick, then uh, these should be moving. So X, Y, and Z axis. So I try to move uh, on the Y axis first. So the middle should move and it does. So slowly, but yeah, this is how I programmed. And you can see that this status LED turns green. So obviously it reflects that something is happening. So the green is when a motor is moving and the blue is a standby. And of course the joystick works backwards as well. And now I can move uh, one direction along the X and the same principle, we have a green LED there and then it works in the other direction. And then of course we have a Z axis. So if I turn this, then you can see that the Z axis works as well. And then I spin it towards the other direction and Z works too. And uh, now I put the joystick in the corner plus kept uh, the Z axis on twisted uh, position. So all the three axes can move simultaneously in joystick mode, as you can see. And I release, that's done. So now I will switch to the next mode, which is the button mode. And what you should see is that this will blink. Because whenever uh, I change modes, I want to let the user know without reading any display or having uh, a connection to a computer that something was registered by the microcontroller. So then uh, this LED here will blink uh, rapidly if I move to the next mode. So that's what you saw there. So now we are in a button mode or in the button mode. And uh, since this uh, switch is at the top position, that means that we are controlling the X axis. And uh, uh, this is the abort button. It uh, is not relevant for us. Uh, but then we have the backward button and the forward button here. So this now only controls the X axis because we only have one uh, axis selected at a time. So let's go forward and that's yeah clockwise. And then let's go backwards and that's counterclockwise. And you can see that the LED still follows. So whenever the motor is moving, 
then the LED turns green. That's very nice. And then next axis is the Y axis. So you can see that the status LED will blink again. And what is happening uh, when I switch uh, on this switch, then this uh, GPIO expander registers that uh, one of its port changed because another went high and another went low. And then uh, through I squared C, uh, we read the status of that GPIO. And then rest is just happening. So now we should move the Y axis. So this is the backwards and uh, forward. So it works as intended. And then obviously we have one axis less left, which is the Z. So this is good. It's moving forward, backwards. Now it's going forward and now it's going backwards. And then, uh, yeah, obviously now the motor is not moving. So uh, it's just difficult to use the abort button, but this works in any case, whatever is the function. And if I press this, then uh, the LED should turn again. So whenever uh, the abort button is pressed, it's kind of an emergency press. As long as it is kept uh, pressed, then uh, we have a blinking LED. And actually I implemented the blinking LED without delay. So I'm using millis there. So it's a non-blocking uh, blinking of that LED. And of course, if I release, then it goes back to uh, the standby mode. So the LED again becomes blue. So since I have this tiny mistake in my PCB, I will fix that and uh, send it to uh, production again. And I will look for a few more mistakes if, if there is any, but uh, this was the only what I uh, found so far. And uh, one thing I did not mention, but uh, now I'm using the AliExpress modules, but I said that this thing is uh, also compatible with the original TMC2209 uh, stepper motor drivers, which are these guys. And it's compatible, however, uh, the layout of the motor pins are a bit different. And uh, due to the fact that uh, it is different, then the wires directly are not compatible. So if you use it uh, with the original module, you will have to twist uh, the pair uh, in in your cable because otherwise the two coils would work against each other due to the difference between the two uh, let's say pin out of the two different drivers so this driver and this driver I try to put them next to each other and I try to show the AliExpress driver and its uh, motor layout and why they differ but of course, uh, this will be documented on my website and on my project page, and you will be able to do that yourself. So in this video, I'm not going to show the code and explain the code, and I'm also not uploading it yet. First of all, it's nearly 2000 lines. It's uh, quite a heavy code because there are a lot of hardware here and uh, also different switches, different uh, uh, buttons and so on. So yeah, it's a lot of work and uh, it would be probably one hour to explain the whole thing and people don't watch it anyway so I would not waste my time and your time uh, either but uh, once I have uh, like a full package here and everything is nicely and neatly developed and uh, thoroughly tested then I will of course uh, do some uh, video and content related to the coding of course uh, but uh, for now, I will just uh, share some pictures and information on my website. So please visit my website. And uh, then I will also share uh, resources on my PCB Way project page. So I will fix the mistake in the PCB and I will upload that uh, project uh, to my PCB Way project page. So if you want to recreate this uh, circuit, you can do it as well. So please check the links in the description because I shared plenty of information there. Visit all the links, including my webpage and the PCB base website. So, and then uh, with this, I would end this video. And just as a teaser, uh, this is made for something else also. So 
in my upcoming projects, you will see some very cool implementation of this uh, board in, in another uh, very cool project. So until that, I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.